call the uh, meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Uh, first order of business is the minutes. Uh, do we have any questions or corrections? Uh, Paul? Uh, Article 38. Are there any other corrections? Dean? Yeah, on Article 38 on the last sentence, um, it remained in the defense fund or crown in your appropriation. Um, I forget which one, it's either 10 or 15. Well, it's either 10 or 16. For our oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was looking at that too thinking, I think it's only 16, not 16. Yeah, I think it is. So let's it. change the one 16 sentence. to 15. Where, where's this now? So we're going to change that to 16, yes, 1, 6. I thought that was a little high. Yeah, <laughs> about three years, we'd be bankrupt too, but you know. Okay, are there any other corrections? David? Okay, so add a plus after the 25. You see that, Peter? Thank you. Okay, any, any others? Paul? Um, human Rights Commission, Jeff First Line, there's an extra C in the word effective. Thank you. Which one? First, first one. one. Okay, any others? Okay, all those, uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes as corrected? So moved. Second. second, moved and seconded. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as corrected, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, done. <coughs> They're here, okay. Hi, welcome back. Okay. Was there an appropriation last year for this? Got it. Okay, well, welcome back. For our new people, uh, Angela was on the Finance Committee for many years. Then she abandoned us. <laughs> okay, could you please tell us, um, so we sort of accepted or got involved in this last year uh, what's happened between last year and this year as far as activities and uh, what did you do with the money and what are you planning to do with the money? Okay. Um, so it's the Battle Road Scenic Byway and that's the towns of Arlington, Lexington, Lincoln and Concord. Um, and we had started this probably a few years ago anyway and we had um, a corridor management plan and all of that and we had a little bit of a lull um, but within the last year or two we picked the project back up again and we had did have at the time um, a grant and a partnership with um, MAPC to get the organization done so that was part of you know what we were looking for for the funds for last year we have a memorandum of understanding I think which everybody was given last year um, and we got the organization all set up and so the current project now is to work on um, branding 
um, and getting a logo. Um, and so it, think of it kind of a little bit like the signage project that we did with ATED, you know, where we have to get the design done and then later on we'll be looking to put that design into things. So um, we're not alone. We, we put in $5,000 and the rest of, if you agree, um, the other three towns also put in 5000 and um, the National Park Service puts in $500. Um, we did apply for a grant we didn't get to work with MAPC again, so we're on our own. Um, and the town of Lexington is acting as the fiscal agent. I'm sorry, the town of Lexington? Lexington is the fiscal agent. It was, we, we had hoped it was going to be MAPC, but we're not able to work with them right now because we didn't get the funding. Um, so this furthers, and we should just say, you know, ATED was formed um, partly into, in support of the Battle Road Scenic Byway when this project all started. And so, you know, this is just furthering the increase in visitorship to Arlington, and it's good because it's a partnership with the other three <coughs> towns. Okay. Um, and are you expecting to have uh, how often have you met? Um, they meet, I haven't been able to attend recently because they meet during the day. Um, I was more active when we were doing the MOU, but Clarissa and Howard Winkler are both on the committee still. Um, generally, it's close to once a month because um, it was the planning to get the proposal out to get the design, and we do have a scope of work now to do the design. We were supposed to be having some meetings that were going to be a kickoff to getting some more input and all of that, and there was just a meeting that was supposed to be last week, and it had to be postponed. So, yeah, there's, there's frequent and regular meetings now. Okay. The, are the designs for signs or um, Yep, stationary? they'll be for, yep, that too. The, the design's going to be for um, logo and branding. Um, we have... Um, we won't have to change our signs that we've already put up. Now. No. No, no, these will be byway signs, so these will be different. Um, letterhead template, um, we're going to have a website and then um, logos for signage and gateway and all of that. So you're putting up a website? There will be, yeah. I mean, all of this obviously will be coming, you know, so we're just working through all the phases to get that done. But we have to get the design work done first. Well, by the way, everybody speak up a little bit. It's <coughs> ridiculous. Thank you. Ready to shut that off now. Um, Well, that was probably, I honestly said to apologize because I haven't been in the music the, um, last year. So we worked on, we worked on the M memorandum of understanding before. And so this is the next phase now that we have that to get the branding done. It's out of scope. Because it doesn't match what they said. All right. I don't know whether you could. Has the. Clarissa board was. Clarissa. Yeah. Finalized? Corey, do you know if it's. I don't know. All right. Okay. Yeah. Clarissa right. wasn't able to attend tonight either, and she has been a little more involved with, with this part of it than I have. Okay. I'm sorry. I was turning off the thing. What, what's the problem? Uh, it says management. Says, for establishing a permanent management entity. Which I think is probably what it said last year. Yeah. It's last, it's, yeah, and it didn't get updated then. Uh, I mean, this project is part of it, certainly. We did the memorandum of understanding, and this is establishing the signage. It'd probably be okay. Right. You know, it, it asked for an appropriation, supportive activities. Uh, what you might want to do is have somebody just give uh, Marie or uh, Fran or somebody in the selectman's office and see if they could just cross off a couple of lines okay. that refer to the, um, you the know, man establishing the management. Event. Yes, because that was last year's project. And yep. if not, I guess talk to John Rioni and see <coughs> if, uh, the moderator and see if, it, if he has any problem with it. Okay. Uh, okay, Alan and then Kel. I want to mention that you already have a website. I pulled it off a few years ago. I just no one ever used it. So if you provide me with some words and pictures, 
For the byway? Oh, sorry, not for the byway, for ATED. For ATED, yes, yep, yep. Yep, yeah, this will be the byway website. Carol? Did, did you establish the permanent management entity? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have a memorandum of understanding now between the towns and the park service. And yes. Yeah, and we have a whole established committee and everything. Okay. How come a government with a uh, $4 trillion budget gives you 500 and all the towns give you 5,000? I guess it, be be it belongs to the town. The byway belongs to us, and the Very park right. service supports it. Thank you, Peter. What are the three other towns? Um, Lexington, Lincoln, and Concord. Thank you. And I assume you know the goal is to bring more tourism to the whole Abs area. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Are there any other questions? No. Um, if, can I just say that I want to thank you all again for voting for the funds for the visitor center just on an ATED topic that, um, you know, we had it open for about a month after town day and we got a really great response. And Trisha so. took the TV out. Um, yeah, I don't, I didn't do the winterization, yeah, but no, no. yeah, um, yeah. But. Huh? Well, it okay. seemed to, uh, seemed to be in a good spot. I understand you couldn't put it up on Mass Ave. Yeah. No, but this turned out to be the best location because we get a lot of traffic off the bike path and we get people going to the bike path. So it was really great. So we're looking forward to having it open for the full season this year. So okay. whenever the snow melts, and we can do that. Is that your goal, just sort of whenever the snow melts? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm we're hoping for, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly, it could be open to town day again this year. Um, I mean, you know, all hope is April. We'll have to see how it goes because yeah. we wanted to have it open before Patriots Day, so you know, we could promote the history and everything. And we'll just have to see how it goes. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, I'm while sorry. You're here, yeah. Me? Yeah. While, while you're here. Yep. Um, how's the signage going? It, it was interesting. I, I have to be very honest. Where I was driving for one day, and I never knew the Schwab Mill was by like. It was pretty interesting. The sign was like right there, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, that's where it is." Yeah. Um, but how was? I mean, I remember we last year you guys were sort of going through the signage efforts and stuff like that. So how's that? I saw one. So yep. I yeah. Well, we have the ones that were appropriated for the first phase are all up. Okay. So that was the you know the end of that because you guys said no last year to the second phase, and we chose you know not to come back um, this year to ask again. So just if you haven't seen them, so there's. Um, we have two at the Dallin Museum, so the one in the front on Mass Ave, and if you're coming off the bike path, you get one with an arrow um, pointing, you know, so behind the visitor center there. We have three for the old Schwamm Mill, so we have the one in Mass Ave, which they love, because now they have no problem, they just tell people, come down Mass Ave, and when you see the sign, take the fork. Um, and they've also been getting people off the bike path, because they've got a sign on the bike path too, um, plus the one at the top of Lowell Street. Um, so we've got those, and then we've got two at the Jason Russell House, so there's the one on Mass Ave, and then there's also one on Jason Street that sort of guides you through the entrance and the fence. So, um, and we've gotten good responses from everybody. So we're looking forward at some point, you know, to seeing if we can do the second phase on that. Okay. Well, have you been to this one, though? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go now. Over at first thing first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do have. I, I should mention too. We we do actually have one that's not up, and that will be for the visitor center. Um, we were waiting. We'll have to talk to um, Mike probably, but we're waiting for them to fix the. You know, the bike path's going to come off the sidewalk and stuff. So we were waiting for them to finish that before we put that sign up. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. okay. Well, thank All right. you. Thanks. Good to see you again. Thanks. You too. Come back anytime. Thanks. See you, town meeting. <coughs> okay. Is uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, why don't we take this one? Uh, a request for an appropriation of $5,000 to continue the work of the uh, 
byway uh, between the uh, four towns and the uh, National Park Service. Uh, what's the will of the committee? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, uh, let me, let's go to article 30. Let me see if you know, I'm trying to just sort of wrap up as many routine stuff as possible. Uh, article 30 is the uh, <coughs> okay is uh, there's four parts the Veterans Day parade memorial observa uh, observation and Patriots Day celebration uh, the managers recommending the same amount five thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars um, Town Day celebration is zero, just a place to transfer money, which to my recollection, we've never done. Uh, display of American flags on uh, Mass Ave. Again, that's always taken care of privately. And placing of American flags on the graves of veterans, 4,500. Uh, so that's the same as we've appropriated before. Uh, the last one, D, is a state mandate, so uh, putting flags on veterans. Uh, so it would be A, 5,667, B and C are zero, and D is American flags, 4,500. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Are there any questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So that's five six six seven plus four five zero zero. All right, so that should add up to ten thousand one sixty seven. Okay, now Article Thirty One is appropriations for miscellaneous. There's really two parts to this. Uh, I keep. Uh, the first part is a legal defense fund uh, to replenish the legal defense fund. Uh, no money has been requested, uh, which is the same as been the last several years. So, uh, and then the indemnification of medical costs. Uh, the request is for 8,500. Um, this is for police officers and firefighters who. Uh, uh, They've used up all of their private insurance, Medicare, whatever they have. Uh, and after they've gone through and used up all of their other alternatives, then the town can uh, take care of those costs. Uh, so A is zero and B is 8,500. Um, are there any questions? Paul? Okay, could you? Okay, I'm sorry. The, the actuals for 2013 and 2014 were 10,839 and 11,071. So, or is this, is this after the fact anyway? So, we don't, we don't have to budget for more than we actually need? I think it's after the fact. In other words, these are for the previous, these are from cost incurred during the previous year. And uh, 
So I'm not sure where they get the balance. Okay. Probably out of, uh, thank you, uh, out of some miscellaneous account. But the request is for 8,500. Okay, do I have a uh, motion? Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor of 85, 0 and 8,500 for Article 31, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Question. Just, is, there, is it zero for out of state travel too? Because it's in the middle of that. We didn't appropriate anything last year. Peter, isn't, the, uh, out of isn't there out of state in the selectmen or manager's budgets? Mm -hmm. There is for the HR department. I'm sorry? There is some, within the HR department, there is a um, travel amount. Okay. I don't see any in the... Yeah, there's an out-of-state travel in the manager's budgets of 3,000. So I think probably the article so is old. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, we could do it there, but it's in the manager's okay. budget. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay. Now, on Article 29, I won't call a vote uh, because the recycling committee is coming in in a few minutes. Uh, and there were some questions there. Uh, by the way, if anybody's a little more mechanical than I am and wants to try turning this thing off, uh, I thought I had it, but. You've got it on automatic now. Yeah. I, I haven't turned it off in years. I've got to try it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the Arlington uh, Gloria has called all of the different groups. So the uh, Historic Commission is 2160, same as last year. The Historic District Commissions is 5100, that's the same as last year. Capital Planning is zero. Uh, commission on Disability is 3000. Recycling is 3000. Um, Human Rights Commission is 4500. Uh, Arlington Tourism Economic Development is 1775. Uh, Vision 2020 last year was 3,000. And Transportation Advisory last year was 15. And uh, apparently this year they're asking for zero. So, Gloria, do you know if anybody's here yet? Yes. They are. Okay. Why don't we have them come in? Have a seat before you get in too much more trouble. <laughs> I've got a couple of these for people to share. You can just look at these and get the. But it's like we don't waste paper, especially when it's my paper. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's, it's not on both sides. <laughs> it's only one side that has the thing. Well, you could have filled up the back with something. Piles of snow. So, um, <laughs> you're on. Uh, you were requested to basically uh, tell us what you've done with the recycling committee appropriation and what you plan to do. And I, 
I think a couple of people had some questions. Okie dokie. So um, thank you for having us in. I'm Gordon Jameson and Julie Brazil. And we're the co-chairs of the Recycling Committee and we're going to do a little song and dance up here for you. Um, the first thing I th I'd like to say is it's really nice to be on a committee where the citizens of town have an interest. And that can be measured by the number of website hits at the question and answer center, estimated on a one month extrapolated to a year. The recycling committee is number one in town. I mean, the recycling and trash, 100,000 hits per year. The treasurer, fire, and police run about 40, the clerk about 30, and parking 20. Everybody else is in the small numbers. So I didn't go to the finance committee site. Uh, that was small numbers. <laughs> <laughs> the manager actually wasn't on the list that I saw either. And on the, this is all the Q&A. Yeah. Joan didn't have time to do the other stuff for us. Okay. Um, so recycling appears to be of great interest to our residents based upon these um, numbers. Julie? So um, as most of you probably know, the DPW and the recycling coordinator working with the town manager really set the policy for trash and recycling in town. Um, we are sort of charged when town meeting created us to, to jump in and be looking for new actions and new programs and new ideas uh, that can sort of help uh, <clears throat> drive down tonnage or increase recycling. Um, and our mission is really very specific that we should focus on expanding recycling, educating and advocating about recycling, and conducting research and programs to increase participation. Um, and, and, and information, getting information and ideas, um, and it has to flow both ways. So we work with DPW and citizens who come in with ideas and try to make sure that um, it's all, um, that we're sort of hitting all the, all the points together and in a coordinated fashion. Um, and we were very lucky, despite all of the snow, to get to meet with, uh, bring Mr. Rodemacher in to meet with the committee and um, really have a good dialogue a couple weeks ago. And that's good for the committee, um, just to have that connection. And my turn. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as you recall, um, given the results of over the, obtained over the last 10 years, and that's the handout there, um, this partnership has succeeded in reducing our solid waste tonnage by over 30%, and with an estimated total net savings for the town over that period of over $2.5 million. Um, historically, these reductions have taken place in a stepwise fashion. Most recently with the change in contractor and the move to the three barrel limit and mandatory recycling. So if you don't put out recycling with your trash, your trash does disappear. And you have a limit of three barrels. <coughs> um, very few, uh, just, just to, to clarify on that, the very few households use three barrels um, or more. Uh, this redu this uh, re uh, resulted in essentially in a, a stepwise function in the media reduction of about 2,000 tons per year with uh, accruing an additional $150,000 of annual savings, which was in part of that number I mentioned before. Julie? What we've noticed, though, is that after uh, you make a change and you get the drop, um, it takes some time to really solidify it. And in fact, in the past two years, we've noticed that trash has been creeping back up. Um, and we really attribute that mostly to increased um, population and uh, turnover and um, and just the economy, people are buying more and, and, and there's more trash being disposed of. But the fact that we're inching back up again um, is a concern and something that we're really um, focused on. So we want to um, really be entrepreneurial and, and, and DPW has to do what they do. We have more of an opportunity to try new things and be a little more energetic um, or aggressive in some of our um, ideas. So. We focus a lot on information and knowledge. Um, we've done a series of articles um, in The Advocate, and they are archived online for all those people who are looking for information about how to recycle more effectively, and we know they do. Um, because we want people to think beyond just the curbside program. We're never going to drive the numbers down if, if it's just a blue bin for household with some bottles and cans and newspapers. Um, and then we really need to work on special projects. Um, going out and talking to people. So town day and our collection days in the spring and the fall, um, which have become increasingly popular. Um, and how, many, how many cars was that last time? 600 cars in four hours, um, which Two. almost exceeds our, our ability to unload them um, efficiently. And an ever-increasing uh, 
mix of things that people can bring right, much we, to their uh, joy. Right, and we expand, and that's one of the things that we can do is pay for a pilot. We can say, well, you know, if people really hate styrofoam, so let's we out of our budget can pay for the styrofoam collection, which um, is a is, it doesn't save the town a lot of money because styrofoam is light, so it's not a tip fee issue. But if we're going to get people in the habit of reducing their volume of trash and putting in barrel limits, big pieces of styrofoam would be bulky. And so we need to sort of, as a community, build new habits. And that's what we can really help position Arlington to do. In addition, there are, um, so, and then, and then the compost bins, which is something that we came to you all about several years ago. Um, we put a significant piece of our budget every year into subsidizing um, compost bins so that they're cheaper for people to purchase. Um, to encourage residential uh, composting as much as we can. Um, so our budget really breaks down into those categories. We, we put money into the collection days so that it's visible and we're solving concrete problems for people. Uh, composting, which is, is an important community effort that we need to all work on. And then um, promotional projects, just different ones um, over time to develop um, interest and energy around recycling issues. Because different people respond to different stimuli. Right. You know, some people like the website, some people like, um, this year we're doing an art thing in the town hall mm -hmm. around uh, town meeting. So on the composting side, where, where we came back to you a couple years ago, um, I talked to the uh, uh, Charlotte Milan, the recycling coordinator, and over the past 10 years, um, 100, about 100 bins um, per year have been purchased. In the last six years, um, We've been subsidizing about, um, uh, let's see, it would be 40 bins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it, those of you who are longtime members remember, as Julie mentioned, when we came here last time to have our budget go from 1,800 to 3,000, it was predicated on, on, on working on composting, which is something that until we develop a town wide system for developing uh, kitchen waste like used to exist 50 or 60 years ago. Um, when the pig farms came around and collected things, um, that's something that we can really work out that takes um, a significant portion of the weight out of, the, out of the, the trash stream, it being about 25% of our existing uh, residential solid <coughs> waste. That's the kitchen waste, uh, compostable kitchen waste. So during the life of our enhanced uh, composting subsidy program, which I think is about six years old now, we've invested at least $6,000 in that. And we, we determined uh, in the calculation that was run here that was positive, was that ba that basically has an ROI of one year. So that means that that $6,000 has netted about $21,000 in return in saved costs at the incinerator. And after we do this year's program, uh, that'll be 7,000 and the ROI will be $28,000. So I think we're doing, and that would pay for our whole budget. So um, we're doing things that are inventive, that are public, and also are brass tacks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so part of our focus, of course, is on um, saving the town money, driving down um, the costs to dispose of the trash. Um, but then um, sort of uh, positioning ourselves for state grants. There's a lot of money um, out there, not a lot. There is money out there that Arlington doesn't yet get its hands on. Um, and we're working with um, the recycling coordinator and uh, DPW to, um, to do what we can to sort of build interest. If we can do our own uh, composting, residential composting pilot program, that will identify people who would be then eligible to jump into a state program that they would really put some money into. Um, so all of which, um, you know, and the collection, has to build. And the collection day builds a, um, a foundation upon which another state program called CHARM, you know, <coughs> into would be another, another positive checkbox. Right. Once we get four boxes, then we start to really get the money. Right. So there's there's interesting programs that, that the state is now putting enough money into that are, it would be worth some some effort um, and and uh, energy. So um, so basically, <coughs> we work um, with over the years with the board of selectmen and the town manager and DPW and town meeting and all of the enthusiastic people uh, who live in town um, to to try and solve the problem. I mean. Waste and, and recycling is an issue that everyone has to deal with, and um, helping people think about it in better ways, um, and proactively bringing programs out and co starting conversations, um, we feel like is a, an important contribution to the town's um, 
sort and of bottom line. And there's some good results. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we have to say. Okay, questions, Christine. Last year, we created a new position that we're funding, uh, costing us over fifty thousand dollars, a recycling coordinator. Why can't we expect this recycling coordinator to do everything that you describe your committee has? So, the first thing is that position has been around uh, the person occupying that position because I just went back through our notes. Um, the was not, position was not created last year. We moved it from part time to full time. Okay. Well, that's a different. That's a different. That's different than creating the position, correct? Dean. She said we spent the money on. Yeah. Okay. So the position has been around for more than one year. Four or five years. Okay. Um, if you didn't have the our work, so these events just don't happen <coughs> without volunteers. And our ability to you know, to add to the collection day thing <coughs> doesn't happen without our revenues. And she can't do everything she needs to do. She has lots of responsibilities. She has to answer the phone. She has to go out and find out people who are not within the three barrel limit. She has to try to uh, control the commercial pay as you throw program. People who are scoff laws along Mass Avenue. She has to try to do a, a um, what is the thing she's doing? She's oh, doing she's been asked to do an audit. There's an no audit way to, to actually tell if the trash, if JRM is living up to their end of the bargain and enforcing recycling and enforcing trash limits if you don't actually ride along. <coughs> and and that's, that's time consuming. But we can't, and she we have certainly, to have the and information. She, and, and certainly not going to be able to do these special programs we do at EcoFest last year and this year with the art, art show. And all those things cost some money. And so we have a, a very small budget thousand dollars within a hundred and forty million dollar budget so uh, our job is to support her efforts amplify as yeah. far as the, as far as her work goes you should talk to the town manager and the director of DTW about her work we uh, think she does doing a spectacular job and she her work is worth every penny that's not my question my question is what is it that you're doing and what is it, does it cost you that you think at least is inappropriate for the recycling coordinator to handle. I don't she know if it's, it's an appropriate, it's the right word, but I certainly, she's one person. Um, so, all right, so, 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 I mean, so what is it that you do and how much does what those actions, though, that work that you do, how much do those tasks cost that you, you, you say it, uh, the recycling, the almost full-time well, recycling? Well, most of it's volunteer work. Do. The so subsidizing of compost bins. Right, but which what's, this the, so what's the cost associated with the volunteer work? That would be free, right? Well, well not the compost bins. I mean, that's actual. The compost bin. We actually put money out to get to help people buy compost bins, and that has a very high ROI. And why couldn't the town do that? In fact, the town is doing it through you. Why couldn't the town just more directly do that? Talk to the town manager or the director of DPW. Okay. It's not, it's not, for, not for a question for me to answer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Gordon, <clears throat> and it's just sort of following up with Chris, what Christine's saying, I, I don't think most of our questions tonight are, are directed at you, really. I think we're more trying to gather information for when we get to the DPW budget. And I, I think, think we're not people to ask about that. No, you're not, but we have to, I think we have to just sort of go through the process and get the information and understand what you're doing and things like that, because I think the challenge we have right now is... And this is more just a discussion, not a question. I think I can short. I'll no, no, use, no, wait, let me finish. I'll just use Al's phrase. No, this no. This is above my pay grade. Right. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not asking. I'm not going to probably not going to say, but what I'm saying is I think what we have now is, you know, we had a 10-year run where we had pretty great things happen on the, um, on the, on the trash side, right? We decreased our solid waste stream and all the things that you had. But there was a point in there when we came for those bins where I wondered whether we were ever going to get a drop. I, I get it. I, I get it. No, I understand. And I think we, so, so we, we've had a great run. We've, we've hit a plateau. We had a meeting last year with the town manager where one of the things he said, and this just so you understand where we're coming from, he had said, you know, if we move this part-time position up to full-time, we're going to see the drop continue. And he listed all these things that were going to happen. It takes time, Dean. I, 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 I know. But, but what I'm saying is I think we're trying, we were, so much skeptical that the effort can be put behind the reduction of the time. So I think we're just trying to follow up and understand 
different things. I mean, it's not a criticism of you guys. I hope you don't think about it in that uh, sense. I personally am interpreting that way, just so you know. You are or not? I am interpreting it as criticism. Of no, I don't, I don't think it is. I realize, that's, why I, that's why I felt like I wanted to explain it to you. I mean, I think it's trying to, you know, because like, you know, one of the examples I'd give you, Gordon, is um, we've talked for a while about, you know, the apartment buildings being the next, or the large building complexes being the place where we have opportunities to, you know, increase recycling and things like that. And the town manager had told us last year that this position would get right on that. And so what we're trying, I think well, that's probably what we're trying to so figure out. So you have one person stretched 20 different ways. And she can only do so much. And she, and, she, well, and, 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 among, and, and since she has been, uh, uh, she was doing something that was basically untenable from our perspective, trying to accomplish things that were untenable based upon the amount of re time she had. Okay, and now she's been moved up. She's still not even <coughs> full time. So right? I, I'm not. Yeah, and look, I'm not gonna trying to argue it. And what, she's only been in that position for a little over a half a year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to argue it. I, what, <coughs> what I'm saying is I think we're trying to figure out, from at least from a cost perspective, um, what the next steps are to get to the next level of decrease. Okay, so those are the types of things we talked to Mr. Rodemacher about. Okay, and we have some ideas, and we tend to be, I, t I personally mm -hmm. tend to be rather pushy on those. Uh, Charlotte actually is quite aggressive in what she thinks we can be, to be done. There's some, but there's, po there's politics in this. We go down to two barrels, which I think is very doable. I think that would be uh, incorporated into the pr program uh, readily. If we went to one barrel, I think the Board of Selectmen's phones would light up and we'd be dead for three years. Right? I mean, this is the way it works in this town. I mean, uh, if those types of things happen, then you don't want to do that. So uh, you want to be able to incrementally increase so that people, most of the town, can all but 1% of the household should be able to go to two barrels without any trouble, based upon the Vision 2020 survey that was held a couple of years ago. Maybe I could try to answer the question this way. She could probably part be softer than me. Well, I, know. I, I have 10 <coughs> years. I have, to, I have over 10 years in this, and many of right. you haven't been on this committee that long. I've had some time to think. Um, obviously, we can't solve all of those problems, uh, um, and it's not our job to um, to tackle how, how Charlotte's time, how the recycling coordinator's time is allocated. Um, but we, our work, um, in the coming year, we envision spending $1,000 on, um, on a composting pilot program. We know that the state has a, a plan, um, which Arlington isn't quite ready to um, take on itself. We need a little time to organize it. But if we spend our money buying bins and organizing some community composting and working on, on sort of a new idea, <clears throat> we'll be attracting people who would then potentially be interested in signing up for the two-year commitment that the state is looking for. Um, so that's a way we can spend our money to move Arlington one step closer. Um, if we spend that money, it doesn't have to come out of DPW's budget. We'll try it. It's just $1,000. Um, and and it and then it's it's sort of easier. We we've done that over the years. We we funded out of our budget um, the the big cardboard bins, um, which was wildly successful and unpopular in various combinations over the years. And so they were eventually taken away when we solved the problem by picking up <coughs> cardboard more conveniently curbside. Um, <clears throat> but if we can throw money into the pool um, to to based on our ideas and our energy and what we think people will participate in, then we can do that for a couple of years. And then if it's successful, DPW does take it into their budget. Piece, over time, we've proposed new things that we pay for out of our budget at collection day. Um, if they become successful, they're built into the system. But that pilot program concept is a way that we can take a relatively small amount of money <coughs> and try things. Um, and that's, I, I think that's a new, and, and is, bring so in volunteers and new, and new energy. And, 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 and it's always good, especially if you're in a volunteer situation, no matter what group I work with here in town, that if you can institutionalize a process over the term, after, after doing something on a volunteer basis with some support financially, that you just, you just that, that means it's locked in. Okay, so before, we worked very hard to get a recycling coordinator, okay? 
And that, that having that person makes the committee so much more effective because we can effect, we can focus on these pushing the envelope entrepreneurial activities, mm -hmm. which is we've done, um, and then have the support of someone who can help us implement those and give us feedback from the DPW. And and the the, the brainstorming there together was okay. I can I I do community composting with my neighbors across the street. I'm I'm single. I don't have a compost bin. I'll admit it but the people across the street are all over it. So I bring my kitchen waste and an old coffee uh, folders can over to their compost and dump it in there. So the idea is that, well, why, uh, my idea was, why don't we do that broadly and come to you for $30,000? And Charlotte said, well, you can do that now. You can, you, so Charlotte said, you can do that now. With your compost thing, we can, this year or next year, as Julie mentioned, what we would hope to do is get, maybe give someone a bin Okay, but you have to have four to six people that are going to do it with you, and then you have to report back at six months and twelve months out, and that gives us an idea of whether we can have community composting in some part, maybe maybe not in all parts of town, but in some parts of town, and that would leverage even that thousand dollars four to six times. So those are the types of things we're looking at, and that eventually what's going to happen is we're going to have kitchen waste pick up door to door, but that's probably not until 2020. That's, that's when that might happen. But we can help provide the, the, the access to these ideas. And you, we may come back to you next year and say, we want $30,000 so we can buy uh, X number of bins at 50 bucks a piece and give those to people like this because that's actually going to have a really high uh, return on investment. But only we'll, we'd only do that after we have some data to tell you that it's worthwhile. And that's what we can do in our programs. OK, John. <coughs> I, I want to tell you that I, I think that what's, what your community has done over the years is just fabulous. Thank you, John. It saves us all kinds of money. And you shouldn't take what people are saying here as criticism. It's not. We're just trying to understand, because we don't understand okay. what's going on with, the, with that coordinator. But I have a question. Well, I have another statement. Well, she, well, and I have from our perspective, I'm, she's extremely valuable okay. to the process. I have two of those bins, and I produce marvelous or Yukon Gold tomatoes, uh, potatoes every year from composting. The garden. committee would love to have you bring them and share them with us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you said something a little while ago that I didn't quite understand. How is it that the contractor can, uh, you know, the J JRM, how is it that they can, So, how, so how come there's no feedback on, on how much recycling and whatnot gets, uh, that they, uh, they claim. I, I would think we get the. We do get the. We get the reports on that. What we don't know is if they're actually enforcing our town rule, which is if you don't have recycling out, they don't oh, take your trash. I see. And the only way you actually know that. Oh, I see. Okay. Is I to do an audit. I thought you meant. Or, or is someone not someone who's a commercial producer not using the orange bags? Yeah. So. I see. The other thing that an audit gives you, the, another important piece of data, is it, it tells us how many people are maxed out. How many people really are putting out three full barrels and a teeny tiny amount, okay. of a token amount of recycling. Um, because that tells us, you know, probably those people um, could be, Drop if we back. dropped it to two barrels or one barrel over time, they could probably adjust um, by putting out more recycling and working a little and harder to sort their trash and, and when we talk about barrels and things, these are all driven by not only the desire to reduce the tonnage by squeezing the amount that you can put out so that people will <coughs> put more in the recycling bin. They're also driven by DEPW mandates. By we have to get to what we would call 50% diversion, but another couple, another uh, 2,000 tons reduction by 2020, and by 2050, we have to be down to practically not to one barrel, basically a half barrel per household. Um, because we have to have made an 80% reduction in our trash from a couple years ago. So have to is maybe stretching it. It's, a, it's an ambitious goal that the state has set. For long but, term. But, but, but we, that's where the money is. If the closer we are to meeting those goals um, and the more interested we are in trying, that's where the money is for the new programs and the expanded programs and that and will enable it to and happen. And the, the, the state tuned aspect of this is are these things we just talked to um, Charlotte about uh, really for the first time in January, these new programs in the state that, that that our work has really um, laid the foundation for the town to be aggressive in its pursuit of those extra funds. And so there's, there's, a, there's a potential for us to have uh, you know, uh, significant monies coming in for revenues to help support um, additional um, aspects of collection that would happen year round, um, 
do a, do pilot composting, uh, 400 family composting things where they help support the startup of that. Um, uh, if, we, if we get four things, we now qualify, have enough points to get significant money. Um, that's eight, you know, it's in the it's in the tens of thousands of dollars potentially. We could grow that over the time. Over the time. <laughs> that's, that's we think eighteen thousand dollars is pretty. I think these people think that eighteen, you know, thirty thousand dollars is a lot of money too. Yeah. But um, uh, if that's revenue, especially that can go in to drive and support staff, the staff, the staff, some of this is going to be extra staff time because of, of the nature of some of these collection things. But if that can be self-sufficient and then still reduce our tonnage, then it's a win-win like we've tried to work in the past. So thank you, John. Okay, thank you. Okay, Carol? What are the four um, areas that we need to touch upon for in, in order to start qualifying for that money? Well, there's, there's actually more than four. but um, uh, So two of them we already do. Um, so um, it's a complicated program, yeah, and okay. we've only gotten one um, so you know, sort of one quick overview on it. Yeah. Okay. But um, it's something that DPW is, is aware of. The state recently increased the amount of money they would pay for, com for uh, communities that qualify, and it suddenly got interesting. Okay. It used to be $300 a point, now it's $3,000 a point. And okay. at six points and eight points, it starts to get interesting. We have to have so. at least six points to get, yeah. to get money. So we, we, we don't we, have six points It's, now. it's right. yard waste and hazardous waste mm -hmm. get us part way there. We need one or two more things to qualify things like expanding collection days to a monthly program. Um, not as big necessarily, <laughs> but a steady um, once a month collection. Um, and then a pilot, a compost pilot program would qualify and eventually reducing our trash limit down to one barrel um, would, would qualify. So things like that that we're already thinking about doing, but we really want to be doing everything we can to um, get the town ready. So there's lots of balls in the air and Again, I would say that we're in an enviable position um, based upon uh, uh, the work that the committee, together with the DPW and the coordinator, have done over the many years that we've been involved in this. And so we're very optimistic about not only continuing to tackle the problem of, of things creeping up again because the economy and our population is growing, face it. I mean, it is. Um, and uh, you can't expect to have you know zero trash growth with you can hope, but you can't it's have nice, zero trash growth if you have population that's growing uh, leaps and bounds, especially on the younger end. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, Stephen? Just, and I may have missed it earlier, what, what's the request this year? Three. Three. Three thousand, okay. And then the second question, Recycling Committee also deals with yard waste issues as well. When it's, I say yard waste, um, yeah, so you know, the program through November and, and um, mm -hmm. Has there ever been any thought after the curbside collection ends to have a central drop off for I'm sure people who get disgusted? The, the, the leaves yeah. don't fall from the I think trees the, as quickly as the problem is the, the yard's not all that big and just the logistics of storage. Um, the, the logistics. I, I imagine in, in November and December there are some leaves that's sure. find their way into the barrels. Yeah. Um, and, and it just seems to be sure. something comes up. And but that's really mm -hmm. not. That's not you, not but, but others. Yeah, that's, and that, and that's, that's really a DPW. But that's, a that's strictly DPW. And that's where the audit is helpful because if the um, JRM people are, they, that's a waste ban. Yard waste in the regular trash is a waste ban. Right. It's against the law um, or the rules of the DEP and also the rules of the town of Arlington. And so that's where the uh, audit is important because if JRM, and, and I think they realize that we have a very uh, observant community. Uh, these types of things uh, on the list and things are, are reported quite quickly that so-and-so took cardboard and put it in a barrel, you know. People watch the trash trucks we, out their windows. Or, or I, I drove by one several years ago when we had the previous person group uh, before JRM and they were taking cardboard that someone had done a masterful job of bundling into the right size and they were sticking it in the trash truck. And I asked them, why are you taking it? Well, it was a, it was a human nature thing. If the recycling truck doesn't take it for any reason, they get called back. And so they were just nipping that issue in the bud. And so we had to constantly call the DPW, who called the waste management or whatever, to tell them, no, stop doing that. And these people have spent a lot of time. They come home, their trash is gone. They think they recycled. No, not so much. 
So um, that's why you always have to, and, and, the, and you know the staff, they have a, a staff that has lots of turnover that works probably from time to time in different towns under different situations, sometimes with a double-sided truck, sometimes with a single-sided truck for recycling. Um, they have a brand new separation facility they just opened near town. And JRM is all about recycling. They love it, the fact that we're <coughs> a recycling town and they'd love to have, help us be more because they really are a recycling company that collects trash. Okay, uh, David. I, I just have a, um, it's a puzzle to me. You say that um, I, the bylaw says that if you, if, you, if you put out your rubbish and you don't put out recycling, then suppose your rubbish would not be picked up, that's correct? A, that, no, that's a DEP, that's a, depart, that's a DPW a regulation. Okay. Well, um, I'm thinking on enforcement now. Let's say you put your, your recycling and rubbish out and your rubbish is picked up before you recycle it. So the truck comes up the street, they don't know whether you have, whether you put an empty barrel out or whether you, you had a full barrel. You see what I mean? The enforcement part of that. So, so but, but, but we don't enforce, people aren't required to put out trash. So if they pick up the trash first, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. It's well, only if they pick up. You aren't required, I don't put yeah. out trash all the time. Hmm? Yeah. I, I sometimes the wrong way. Yeah. So someone picks up your trash yeah. first. Recycling first. Recycling first. Okay. Leave you should leave out. a bin out there next to the trash bin until the trash goes away. Right. I understand right. that, but let's talk reality. We've just gone through a nasty winter and we're not through with it, and the wind has been out of place. I've chased. I live on a hill, just similar to where you live on a hill. I know you do. Yes. Yeah. She does too. And I've been, I've been, <laughs> chasing, I've been chasing my barrels, so finally I gave up and put it in, especially with the wind. So that, so that. Well, I think in the winter, um, this, the, think, the, the, yeah. the situation is a, there's a little dispensation, knowing the fact that just the ability to go around and collect. But in the summertime, the deal is the same thing. So if you if you get a if you get a thunderstorm or windstorm, I'm in background. So <laughs> I, I, how do you enforce something that when someone says you well I put it out but it's empty and or whatever. They can send the trash trucks out a half hour on the same route before the, reci uh, before the recycling. Yes. But, but that's what Charlotte does. Charlotte drives around she, uh, routes. I've seen it. And, and she drives around and she's looking for the places where there's trash with no recycling. Yeah, she and, primarily and focuses in on the commercial more than the residential. Well, the commercial, is, there's a lot of scoff right. law there. I understand yeah. that. Because yeah. it's, it's difficult in, in uh, mixed use, mixed residential business used to do things and there's a lot of tonnage that they should be paying for because we give them we give those people uh, full access to the recycling program the people who are in the, the uh, pay as you throw uh, business uh, program uh, where they pay per bag and I know there's a dentist on Park Avenue every Friday he's got his bags out there but I go along Mass Ave and there's some hunky dory stuff going over at, at Mal's regularly <laughs> where there's there's a bunch of bags and there's no recycling, or there's a bin that looks mostly empty. So you know, people pe people are creative. They'll work a the system. They'll abuse the system. There's only one person there, really, beyond the JRM guys, <coughs> to um, enforce. We don't have a, a trash policeman. Okay, I don't think the board of selectmen or would really want one, based upon past That's conversations. Like it, no. no. This is a this is supposed to be a, a, a nice place to live. People are generally compliant. People are very interested in recycling, and there's some people who just don't care, and that's sad. Right. We'll get to them all eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think more so than I think more people recycle now than than ever before. Yes, I, I know I recycle more than when I first came here. Yeah. I know I, do. and I'm on the committee. Give her. <laughs> are there any other any other questions for the committee? You, you, you said it before that you work with the recycling coordinator all the time. We only visit this once a year, and I think it was important for us to know what you do, what they do, and how they, how they well, interconnect. She's That's a, the range of it. She, she's, she's a member of the committee by bylaw. Yeah. Um, uh, so she's at every one of our meetings. And what the first thing we do at every meeting, if you look at our, our minutes, is we get the, the, the coordinator's report, which a lot tells us how we're doing. You know, are we are we status quo? Or are we going creeping up? And 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 then where where you know what the DPW is telling her, and what we can tell through her is the DPW. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, thank you both for coming. We Sorry for getting a little exercise there, guys. I've been at this a while. <laughs>
just like you, Al. Just, just be patient with this, Coach. I know. <laughs> Okay, um, why don't we go to Article 29, and uh, okay, so just once, when we go down through it again, Historic District Commission is 2160, Historic District Commission is 5100, Capital, zero, Commission on Disability, 3000, Recycling Committee, 3,000. Human Rights, 4,500. Uh, tourism, 1775. Vision 2020 was three. And Transportation Advisory Committee um, was zero. Uh, so everybody was the same as they were last year, uh, except for the Transportation Advisory Committee, which is zero. Uh, do I have a motion on, so on that? Okay, second? Second. Okay, is there any? Any discussion? What, what is the total then? Oh, uh, it looks like 30, oh no, sorry, just a minute, 22,535. That'd be higher than that. Okay. Uh, okay, is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of those uh, committees and their uh, separate amounts, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Now, on uh, next week, uh, we're going to have the water bodies in at uh, 4th, uh, 745. And the assessor's in at uh, 815 for the revaluation. And the Harry Barber funding, uh, Article 35, that'll be in at 830. Uh, and then we'll get going on the, uh, on the budgets. Um, so next week, uh, we're going to go into budgets now, but hopefully, uh, on Wednesday, we don't have anything except budgets. So if you could get those in uh, and ready to present. Now, one thing is going to be a little bit complex. There's no pay raises in these budgets. So, uh, and to my knowledge, you know, no contracts have been settled yet. I, I'll talk to the manager about that. So all of the... Um, this hasn't sort of formally been blessed by the Budget and Revenue Task Force yet, uh, which is meeting on the 23rd at 6 o'clock. Uh, you're all welcome to attend. Uh, everybody on board, but <clears throat> the managers proposed what he proposed to you uh, a couple weeks ago, that uh, uh, he's taking all of his budgets down to a three and, three, uh, three and a quarter percent increase and allowing the schools to stay at three and a half and then the next year, his goes down to uh, three percent. The school goes down to three and a quarter. And then the year after that, it's three and three. So, trying to curtail this down. Now we might have to go f steeper down after that, uh, depending on what happens with local aid and uh, and things like this. Um, so, all those people on non-manager appointing authorities, you know, the assessors, the treasurer, the selectmen, uh, all those people. Um, you, you sort of might, uh, you know, want to take a look at that when the contracts come in, you know, plug them in and make sure everybody's below the three and a quarter percent, because uh, we've, you know, we've got to bring down the rate of growth um, as much as possible. Uh, if it's below three and a quarter, that's fine. Um, I, I have a feeling that uh, anything we get below three and a quarter, we might want to shift into the next year's snow and ice budget. Um, it was amazing. They showed uh, they, on the news today before it came, uh, they compared Boston to Nashville. And both cities have about 650,000 people. Uh, Boston has 500 trucks to clear snow. Nashville has 14. <laughs> and, and they're getting walloped. They're just not used to this uh, on that. So uh, that'll be something we have to deal with. Uh, hopefully we can fund a lot of that snow and ice deficit with the uh, reserve fund 
Um, I think it's a good thing that we uh, we brought that up to a million because that'll have to um, that'll have to go in there. Okay, let's switch to budgets. Um, Peter, you and David have any budgets? We do. We do. Okay. Starting with the selectmen. Okay, everybody, go to the selectmen. Twenty-five. big difference is the election officers' salaries, those are the people at the polls. Um, the um, Marie Karpelka uh, recruits those people, and she's, <coughs> she wants to make sure that they are not, they're not, they're uh, paid a reasonable amount of money, which she figured out based on the minimum wage. Um, there are two elections this, in this FY16. So <coughs> that, that, of course, makes the, that affects, it's hard to compare column to column. Um, I guess the other thing I'd I'd like to mention is that um, accounting and auditing, which is on page 28, is um, a, a request for $57,000. Uh, with the, the extra $2,000, they were told um, covers um, auditing of the SPED program. But the SPED people didn't, the school department did not budget it, so it'll, it'll come out of this. In, in the past, uh, uh, Ruth Lewis says, uh, they have been able to gray bill the school department for part of the accounting and auditing budget. I don't think, to me, my way of thinking, all that's not important, but it's interesting. So, when you add the office uh, charges on the first page, the elections of 87,760, the audit of 57,000, and printing the town report and some other printing of 3,500, the total is $382,632. Could we go through these like one at a time? On the, go through the elections, what are the changes here? The, the big, <coughs> the big change is the uh, election officers. I think there's some other smaller ones. The change from the budget book, is that what you mean? Right. So you got some minor changes in expenses. Is the is the uh, decrease in the salaries and wages because we're only two elections? Yes. But you, you don't want to be. Com <laughs> what are you concerned with now? What's the change in the budget book? From, from, from the budget book to the to the. Uh, did, 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 you, did you get the handout? Yes, got it right here. So. Budget book has salaries and wages of thirty-four thousand two hundred, and the uh, your substitute has twenty-eight to twenty. Twenty-eight to twenty. Yeah. Where is he? What's your hand? Oh, the bottom line. No, 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 top line. That that that's. That there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
said before. So did that decrease because of the two elections? Are you going down for more elections? Let's see, why, why is that different? <coughs> The, the substitute here, which came from, uh, which is really Kropelka's uh, numbers, I guess it probably is two elections. There are all sorts of ins and outs of this. Well, right, but uh, the comparable election, so when we do the 16 budget, the comparable year is 14. So if we compare 14 to 16, we get to where we need to be. Isn't that what we usually do is just go back two years? Yeah, it, it, that's approximately. Which doesn't make any sense with their salaries. Well, it looks like code 5100 and 5219 end up just washing, is what it looks like is happening here. Because they, they're almost, if you just flip them, the exact numbers, when you get down to the bottom line, you have 82344 for 2014 actual and 87760. 2016 budget, which I'm assuming, is, as Peter's saying, is when you look at the change in the Massachusetts minimum wage that's going up okay. annually over three years is what I think they're trying to communicate is right. the, the, uh, the increase. Well, could we ask, the, there are, there's the elections officers numbers as part of expenses, and then there's salaries and wages. What, who's included in salaries and wages? Just a minute. The janitors, excuse me, the uh, custo custodians, uh, DPW for moving the uh, uh, printing the uh, voting posts from storage and setting them up and so forth. The police, that's a big chunk. Uh, an electrician and uh, and there's a town meeting chunk in there too. The Custodial services at town meeting. That's based on eight, uh, eight uh, nights. And then the election salaries, salaries and wages would be. That's what I just went through. You mean what's the total? No, it, it, it's you've got fifty one hundred. That's what it went through. That's okay. What's the day workers on election day is the others. The poll workers. Okay, the poll work. So 5219 They aren't higher, they're, for whatever reason, they aren't listed as, uh, as salaried people. They're not really town employees, they're peace workers, I guess, or something like that. Okay, so which one are the poll workers? 5219. 5219? Yes. Okay, so that's the poll workers. Okay, and then the custodians, DPW, police, et cetera, is 5,100. That's correct. Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, we'll use the same format in our report anyway, so we thought it would be more clear to lump election officers and salaries in with the other salaries and wages, we can do that in our report if you think that would be more clear. Or if we can combine 5100 with 2219. It sounds like 5219, they're independent contractors. So far sure right, they're 1099 employees. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Mark Hartley? And we get W 2s. Okay, that's those people. And basically, yeah, uh, the others, the poll workers are lumped into expenses in our report. I mean, they're, they, they're town employees. They might be they special W2s town employees or something. But, I'm sorry. Do, we know, do they get W-2s or 1099s? No. We get W-2s. No. Can you? I, 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 <laughs> this is... 
this is this is gray area that really should they do not receive 1099s at the end of the year unless they went over a certain amount of money. Right. right. So they're yeah. contract. Just like so yeah, it's yeah. a voucher for yeah. right. It's a 1099 threshold of 600. It's a different okay. uh, pay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so the custodians, etc., regular town employees that get W2s, right. and the poll workers, you think, the 1099s? No. 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 Well, they would. They have to make, they 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 made over, over right. 650 dollars for the given year. They're 1099 contractors, but they don't meet the threshold for reporting. Yeah. And in that group, they have that includes the warden, the clerk, the tellers, and the substitute tellers that fill in for uh, yeah. lunchtime. Okay. Are there any other questions on elections? Are there any questions on the 13 town reports and the auditing and accounting? So I never knew. So they, they've been doing the special education auditing program for? At least in recent years, apparently they have been, yeah. But the balance would have normally come from the school budget. In some years, it has. I, I didn't ask Ruth for a year-by-year -year account. Okay, anybody? Okay, now how does this affect or was it already taken into account on page 25? Or there's no total? There's no total in okay. the budget book. That's, what I, that's why I read out the, the sum, which is 382632. Well, we, we can vote on the totals of the bottom lines. That's just for the office, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, are there any questions on uh, 25? So the, the whole budget is Uh, do, I'll take a motion on all of the selectman budgets then. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Any further questions? Okay, move favorable action. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll, I'll have to abstain this year on that one. I have to abstain on this. Okay, I don't show the votes in the, when we do the budgets anyway. Unanimous with one <coughs> abstention. Okay, uh, that's two eighteen. Okay, selectman's done, Peter. You want to handle the uh, manager? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the manager budget as presented. Now there, there could be um, there could be a change in, in, in this total figure at some point. We have to wait for um, <coughs> Andrew to come in. It has to do with the manager's salary. Okay. Well, let's do the budget and then we can go back and adjust it later. If we need to. Okay. So. Total for 2016 is $502,524. And this under that cap is Is there any, are there any questions? Dean? Could we get more of a general question? Um, could we get a sort of, could we 
can throw out the slides here. Can we get a summarized breakdown of how the offsets worked? Because I'm sort of staring at the four-year trend of offsets <coughs> here, mildly scratching my head at how they got to the numbers. So it, it, rather than have to struggle with it day after day, if we get one, if they can provide us one centralized location or analysis <coughs> of how they got to it, which I'm sure they have, it would be helpful. Grant, do you have that as a page? I'm trying to, uh, it's this mysterious algorithm that I have a feeling changes every year, but we can map it out. You know, we can trace it through the budget. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth asking the uh, deputy yeah, manager for, for that analysis. Yeah. We can ask, we can ask for that. Yeah, and there, I mean, the reason I'm asking you to use this as, as the example is that it, it looks like if you just, and maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like if you go from 15 to 16, the, the offset on the incremental increase, so if you just sort of eyeball it and you say, well, okay, longevity went up 1,600, other benefits went up 7,000, so let's say 8,500 and everything else is flat. It looks like the incremental offset is over 50% because it went from 109 to 110 to 115. So how do we get a 50% incremental? It just seems when the beginning one, when the beginning isn't fifty percent, the beginning one's like twenty percent. I, I agree. I'm not so. I, I inquired about it last year, and I could look into it. It seems to be it may not be necessarily a relationship with the percentages. I think it's sort of the algorithms kind of developed, perhaps after the fact, to plug gaps or something. I have a feeling. Yeah. Well, well, why is it a mystery? You know. <coughs> well, and I think they can answer it. It seems like a fairly simple one. Why do we have 50% incremental? Okay, could you uh, either sit down with uh, Andrew in all the detail and, uh, and get an explanation? Um, and if uh, uh, you feel comfortable with it, you can come back to us, that's fine. If you want Andrew to come back, then we'll go that way. Okay. You know, and just go through the whole of the whole thing. So it looks like about a four and a half percent increase in the offsets. On this budget. On this budget, and it's about, I don't know, just before we go to print, I always take a hand calculator and add up all the offsets and make sure they, they match the, because I'm always asking about that. But I think you're asking more serious, how is it actually determined? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was by a formula that was decided by Powers and Sullivan you know, like 10 years ago. And I think they just updated from them. But why don't you, no, why don't you check with Andrew and, and, and get that down more? Yeah. One of those things were three years ago, we probably asked the same question, but it was three years ago. So, you know, we've got, a, last year. we've got to refresh refresh our memory. But the question is how, <clears throat> and then, you know, uh, what's it based on, which I think is the powers in Sullivan, and then how is it adjusted each year? The adjustment part of it would then be, I meant the, the revealing part, but sure, yeah. we'll ask about that. Well, if I look at the indirect charges on uh, the water and sewer, uh, you know, it's up about eight, nine, no, actually it says right here, 7.93%. Um, now that could be because of health insurance and pensions. That, in other words, that could be the lion's share. Because that's going up 7.93 percent. This is only going up 4.8 percent. So, but why don't we let Grant uh, check that out and get back to us? Cool. Excuse me, Paul. Do these offsets include other things other than water and sewer? Are there rec department or AYCC or other offsets? I think that all the enterprise funds, with, with the exception of AYCC, pay a share of the health insurance through the, the enterprise funds. But, but this should probably be just water and sewer, I think. For the town manager's offsets. I'll bet he gets a piece of everything. Probably, it's probably water and sewer would be my guess. The, the whole offset's about 500, almost $600,000. Uh, but like I said, it's, 
Yeah, and the only other thing I guess I would ask for is so we don't have to do this every year. I think he just gives us a copy of the report. I, I obviously they have it and they use it, but I think we could stop it from having it or us from having to ask every year. Thank you. Well, I yeah, I agree. Year. I know we asked last year. No, we do. We, it's a fun topic. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'd like to get a, a copy of the calculations <coughs> of the report so we could up, we could refresh our memories. Okay, uh, are there any other questions on the town manager's budget? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any other questions? Now, so we could come back to this for the town manager's salary and then Grant will work on, her, uh, on the, the whole offset question. Of course, that will affect everybody. Uh, all those in favor of the manager's budget as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's 502-524, right? Yeah. Okay, Peter? Okay, our next one is um, legal. Handle that one. Yeah, David. I'll do that. If, um, I know you, you have copious notes on it too. So. <laughs> uh, the uh, 2016 request is uh, 453,689. That's page 61. Yeah. And 62. Understanding is that they have they have no major litigation pending at this time. Um, wow. <laughs> and um, if you notice under the uh, for um, in the salaries, the stipend for. The uh, benefits for Rickland's comp position, there's also a stipend underneath that. Um, that also could be subject to change. That, um, we'll have to check with uh, the town manager on, on that figure. But that's as it is as it's presented now. And that's for additional work done by uh, that position holder for our. Um, Identification, self interest. Okay, it's so very well to us. So that's not part of his salary. That's a reserve. That's a, sti a stipend. Oh, it, it is, is a, sti it's a regular sti stipend. A stipend, but that, but it, that n might not be the true figure. That's still being worked out with the town manager's office. I'm sorry. What was it for? It's for um, he, he does special work, litigation on uh, self identification for um, for the town on certain things. I, it was it was kind of over my my pay grade, but it's, it's um, he had been doing it before, and he had received the stipend before, and then when he was um, as acting as uh, acting town council, they had to drop that. There seemed to be a. Be, that figure conflict there seemed to be a conflict of interest so now they it's picked back up but it's the, the true figure hasn't been negotiated yet so they use that as a, an adjustment figure for now he is in charge of the town's self-insurance program right okay. which covers and lots of things that yeah and we're not, one of the not health insurance that obviously and that sort of thing but and, this, and sort of the backup second attorney yeah and, and, and they they actually they save quite a over over the year. They save quite a sum of money, so so that's it. So that's what, what's what's included in the expense line. I'm sorry, Christine. I'm what's included in the expense line? Yeah. I couldn't under. Is that what, a what's part? included in the expense line? line. What's you, included? You oh. took the notes. And <coughs> oh, yeah, Le legal expense, right? Right. 
think most of that is outside labels. Outside labels. Legal. It is. I, I can tell you more. If you're there are uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, firms that they've de dealt with in the past. Um, they're, they're, the budget's based on, or well, the current year is, is they're using three. Um, there's one handles labor issues, one handles environmental issues, one handles uh, construction, and there was a, they, they had a case in Connecticut they had to get help for, uh, for that one. What case in Connecticut was that? I, I knew all about it last year, but I've forgotten what. It, it's, it's, been, it's been resolved. It's so been resolved. They, right. They're not using that person anymore. I'm just intrigued why we would be spending any money on a Connecticut lawyer. I, 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 I think it was Ever. an honest, I'm, I'm guessing, I think it was an out-of-state situation. So. That's why they went that way. Okay, are there other questions? If you, uh, Christina, if you'd like this, uh, uh, spreadsheet on, on that, I'd be happy to make you a copy. That'd be great, thing. Okay, if you could uh, uh, make it up for everybody. Peter. Okay. okay. Any other questions on the legal budget? So are you recommending as, as uh, written? Yes. 453-689. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any further discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor of 453-689, we say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 218. And Peter, you'll get back to the, with us with that little spreadsheet. Thank <coughs> you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next. Next is the uh, clerk's budget. And that's on page 65. And if you go to page 62, uh, 66 rather, under the salaries, there's a, um, for some reason, under longevity for the town clerk in 2016, it was, um, that's, an incorrect figure. The figure should be 4,373. 4,373. Okay, I'm sorry, you're talking about the town clerk. Town clerk on 2016, that, that longevity figure is incorrect. Okay, should be? It should be 4,373. 4,373 right. instead of 3498. Correct. Okay, and that I assume impacts the. Uh, impacts the, the longevity figure on page 65. That goes from 6111 to 6986. 6986, yes. Yeah. And then your, your total clerk's budget then goes from. Goes to two six three three two eight. Two six three what? Two six three three two eight. Two six three three two eight. That's the only change. Okay, uh, questions? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, moved and second for 263328. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. 218. Next. Board of Registrars. The Board of Registrars. If you, 
go to page 70. Tech, tech support, the last one in the column over the 2016, you notice that there's no figure there. It was not included and it should have been. Okay, so there should be an extra 150. 150. So it's 44. Eight three five. Eight three five. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. What's the total amount? Okay. So forty four eight three five. Sixty five. So the total would be sixty five eighty five. Right. So. Okay, are there any questions? What's the total again on that? Sixty thousand five hundred and eighty-five dollars. Any others? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Yeah, my, my yeah. and I, I guess I'd be, I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can here, but so the clerk and the registrar roll up as one appointing authority, correct? Yes. So we have flat salaries on one plus pending a salary increase, we have 6.28 on the other. I don't know if that's pending a salary increase. These are just steps. Or not. Um, one's much larger than the other. So I guess if you weight the average. Yeah, okay, fine. I, I was just trying to figure out if they, if you layered on an increase, if they were going to go over three and a quarter, but I don't think they will. No. They'll be under. Okay. Never mind. Well, Okay, you mean both combining both the clerk and the register? Yeah, what I'm trying to do, though, I think what you said earlier, I'm trying to take everyone's and then assume they get a, let's say, a two and a half percent increase into the throw them at that point, and this yeah. would. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of 60,585, we say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 18. Okay, Peter? David? Next one is planning on page uh, 76. recommend the budget as, as printed. Um, if you look at the, at the salaries page, which is 78, there's the um, technical planner slash GIS analyst. And that position is paid by three different budgets. Uh, in addition to planning, there's uh, 18,000 something in IT and another 18,000 in uh, water and sewer. So I guess it would be a good idea to make sure that, that that's the way it actually is. All right, so I need to check. That's what planning thinks it is.
And the, the assistant director has gone up considerably, like eleven thousand dollars. And that looks like it's set because of the both the grade, the step, and the longevity increase all in one year. Jeez. Um, recently been qualified as a uh, as a as a same kind of planner that uh, Polowski is. So we I think, it, I think it, she, she had a, re, a reclass. Did she have a reclass? Mm, I don't know about that. Hold on, let me look at it. Because I'm doing that tomorrow. That might have been last year. That might have been last year. Oh, it would have been last year. It would have been last year. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's so take a look at the. I don't have it from last year then. But you know, I, I do remember talking about. Okay. Senior planner and housing director. Oh, that's it. Yeah, in the uh, plan classification last year, we went, we took the, I assume this is the right person. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, senior planner, housing director. Oh. We took from eight, 18 to 10 to 12. Yeah, that's 12. And $11,000, 11224 in last year's town meeting. So, okay, and that's going to the assistant director of planning and community. Yeah, okay, that's right. it. I can pull so that. So that was in the... Uh, Classified last year. Five thousand. So between that and the steps, it accounts for the uh, increase in salaries and wages. Okay, are there any, are you recommending as printed? Yes. Yes. I have a question. Okay, Christine. Um, last year we increased the hours for the conservation administrator. And at that time, I, rec I recall that uh, the idea would be the conservation commission would increase their fees to help offset that um, uh, increase. Um, but it doesn't look like uh, that's happening. Do you know anything about that, Peter? Um, I, I asked if they, in, in past years, the three thousand dollars was dubious. Uh, this year, I didn't. I forgot what you just said. They said no, no problem. We can do that. So. That's, no. Okay. Could you? Why don't I find out if they can do a little more? Or any, <laughs> or any. You know, they they can do the three times. Well, I know they can do the three, but uh, could you contact about <coughs> has the conservation commission increased their fees to help contribute and support this? And I think we can go ahead with the budget, but if you could come back with that next time, we'll do. Okay. Okay, any additional questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, motion's been made and second for 415,730. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. <coughs> Okay. Well, the 
the redevelopment board. Uh, the redevelopment board proper is level funded. <coughs> if you wonder why the budget is uh, so much bigger than the than the actuals, though, um, the answer to that. That Carol gave was that they are. Uh, it come, it's the, <coughs> the cost of of implementing the master plan in, in her department in, in this uh, redevelopment board. Now. So will that amount? Tend to go down at some point in the future? I guess one would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this has been separated out at our request by the manager. You see, the next one is general fund rental properties. So we get all the rental properties. Unfortunately, they didn't go quite as far as I had hoped um, <coughs> and include. You know, Mount Gilboa and Ryder Street and all those properties too, which I've asked them to uh, not ready to sort of tear apart the public works budget this year, but hopefully they, I've asked them to do it for next year uh, and get that information down. In addition to that, there's a, it also doesn't include debt, debt payment. So, but in the case of the, the, the uh, the Gibbs, uh, Parmenter, and what's the other one? Uh, Central, okay, well, Central. Let's, let's finish up the redevelopment board right now. Oh. Okay, so redevelopment board is 10,008, the same as we budgeted last year. Uh, are there any questions? <coughs> Do I have a motion? Oh. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of 10,800, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 218. Okay, rental? Do you have that here? Yes. Okay. Page 85, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So if you, <coughs> the debt payment for, for these uh, properties was uh, 88,729. So the, uh, the balance, the positive balance, which is a negative number in here, is 238,863. <coughs> but I believe we're, the, I'm, <coughs> are you gonna, change the way you handled it in the report? The way we have been handling it is only the expenses go in the report and the, the revenues are hidden in the local receipts. That's how you have to do it. Hidden is a very strong word here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wash my mouth up. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know, we'll think about this. I think, Alan, you know, put it in as the, all the expense items. And what I was thinking at this point is a footnote, uh, you know, on the revenues. Uh, revenues are projected to be uh, for next fiscal year five hundred eighty-one thousand two twenty. Uh, these amount, these. Uh, and how about something to the effect? Well, I, mean, I, I can add it in the column and sum so you can, so we can see what the net is. Yeah, but. but not uh, I just want to use it as a footnote this year because it's really not an enterprise fund. I don't want people to think right. it's an enterprise fund. But I think we could say uh, projected revenues for for, uh, uh, for this budget next year are the <coughs> 581, 520. Uh, the expenses above do not include uh, capital, uh, you know, or depreciation. Uh, we can flesh that out a little bit. Well, again, if we don't don't include it in the appropriation, but we can have the revenues and the debt service underneath the bottom line, just so the arithmetic's done. 
and they can see exactly what the you know real profit is. Mm -hmm. But then you have to pull it out of where it uh, where it is right now, right? No, but wouldn't include in the appropriation. Just just put it there, it's sort of as a note, as an addendum. So it wouldn't be in the appropriation. Okay. But it would just is be it like, like a footnote. Is, is, uh, in the capital, capital plan. plan. Uh, but if you could find out, uh, you know, what the debt service is, yeah. uh, and other capital. I'll put something, something in we can look and see. But, but, but I think it'd be good to have a non-appropriated number, which is, <coughs> oh, yeah, which is transparent, which shows yeah. exactly. Because everybody always asks, are these buildings making us money or losing us money? So let's yeah. come up let's, with something. Let's fit in as much as we know. Yeah. I mean, if it was enterprise fund, we'd have depreciation or right. something. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we can't change it into a, I'd like to, well, I'm not sure I wanted to send it as one or not, but it would be, uh, you know, you'd be taking a lot of revenue out of the general fund for one thing. Uh, so it's probably not a good idea, but we couldn't do well, it under the statutes now. We'd have to have a special legislation. But, um, you know, the thing that this never shows is all the capital. That's why uh, Brian was so anxious to get rid of the Crosby School, because he just saw that going, coming down the road, there was going to be some big capital for, for that building. And you know there probably will be for these other buildings, too. So, yeah. um, so again, not a voted appropriation, but, but as a point of information, we can include right. whatever makes it realistic. Yeah, just as a regular budget, but as a separate section footnote, something like that. Play with it. We'll see what yeah, we'll see what comes up. See what we come up with. Okay, so what we're appropriating now is the 200. By the way, I assume you're it, it's uh, you're presented, you're recommending as presented. Correct. Okay, so what we're appropriating now is 253,928 as presented above. Now I suppose it would be interesting because Peter, do they have this? Uh, you know, somebody's going to ask me. You know, here's the Gibbs expenses. How much are we getting in Gibbs revenue? So, could, could you ask the manager's office? Could they break it down by Gibbs okay. expenses? Go to the next page. Oh, okay. Don't go to the next page. Okay. Don't the next page. <laughs> okay. So there's Gibbs revenue, and just between maintenance, you're talking almost 200,000. Of course, you don't have part of the salaries, too. The, the next page after that is the salary. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but that's for all the buildings, not for just that's true. One of them. What, Alan? Why don't you, you know, in the footnote, break down the revenue for each each building? Yeah. Okay. okay. Expenses for each building. Alan, you're saying that doesn't include Mount Kilbawa and right? It doesn't include. It doesn't. Those just don't public works. So I, I, that's one of the reasons I want to see it. So we have we see everything in one place. But those are still in public works. Well, the revenue is in the old building. I'm sorry? The revenue isn't. Yeah, the revenue probably just goes into the rental budget yeah. or the, you know, the, the expenses, estimated receipts. The expenses, right. but not the revenue. Yeah, yeah. 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 see, you brought up the debt uh, service or the debt payment of 88729 What is that for? Yeah. Like, where'd you get that number? What, what, how is it related to these expenses specifically? Well, I have a spreadsheet here that that, uh, that Flanagan provided that shows uh, the whole each line is for a different something different that was borrowed for. So, so particular projects that were at these buildings that yeah, it's allocated that service. Peter, it's their portion of the capital budget that got bonded in prior years, right? Okay. It, it's a so that's a, an attempt at earmarking. Not earmarking, but just it's their portion of debt service in the capital budget. Okay, okay. Uh, Stephen, <coughs> eyes around what they used to be. Where do you see debt service here? Well, no, Peter, they just mentioned oh. it to us. Oh, um, I see. I'm sorry. It, 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 the spreadsheet has 
a bunch of thanks for gifts and a bunch of thanks for Parmet her and yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, th that wasn't on here. I was just curious. It, yeah. It, it just mentioned it was eighty-eight thousand seven twenty-nine, and I, I didn't know how they broke that out. But thank you. Okay. Are there other questions? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion for the two fifty-three nine twenty-eight? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 216. 18. Peter? Uh, one more, ZPA. But before I go there, well, did you ask us to get something on, for, for the properties? I started, uh, I started to write it down, but I missed the. Uh, he found it. Oh, right. The revenue was on the next page. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, well, we'll include in the footnote revenues for each of the three major properties. And then, uh, you know, so they get the information, but it's not like they think they're voting on an enterprise fund. And, uh, and you might even say which go into the general fund. Uh, yep. And then any other uh, expenses uh, not included above include debt service and anything else uh, or future capital. Okay, uh, ZBA? Uh, recommend that it has uh, printed 22,012. Questions? Okay, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? What's the number? 22012. Okay. Oh, did I ask for a vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, is that it, Peter? Yes, it is. Okay, very good. Thank you both. Uh, are there any other budgets? Yes, the Health and Human Services budget. Okay. Starting on page 147. Okay, hold on. One. 147. Okay, so everybody uh, got them all? Yes, so on page. Great. 149 is the budget. Um, I just want to say something about the um, salaries on the next page. Uh, just so you know that uh, Brennan, the office manager, is really full time, but um, part of the budget is paid from other funds. Now, is this his full salary? That's why his salary is below the minimum? Yes. And I don't know if there are other budgets necessarily, but from other funds. Yeah. Well, sometimes, especially in the health, we footnoted. Right, when we were doing social workers and stuff. But yeah. it's not that. Do you know where, where the money is coming from? No. Uh, I don't, so I'll have to ask her. Okay, you could. So see, because uh, let's see, we have footnotes under uh, the health compliance officer, the I think there's a couple others. Social worker, <coughs> nurse, represents town portion only. These positions are right. partially funded by. Right. So Usually it was grant. Those were from grants, but this, I don't know if that's true okay. for this. So if you could check on that, because then we you know, might want to add that footnote okay. there too. 
Do you want to wait to vote on that before I, I mean, till I know? Uh, no, I, I mean, okay. it doesn't affect the, the amount we're appropriating, but if you could get back to us yep. as soon as you can. Okay, so for that particular budget, I just want to vote what's printed on page 149, which is the 3,722,474. You see they bumped up the mosquito control. Yes, and, and I did thing. ask her about that, and they are, because of the weather we've been having, they're anticipating a much worse mosquito problem in the spring. I started hoping they'd all freeze to death. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be thought about right, it. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, if the snow doesn't melt till town day. <laughs> might. <laughs> I'm sorry, it might, have, might, have, might save some money. Yeah. I don't think so. Right, Christine has a question. Okay, are there any questions for the uh, Health and Human Services Administration? I, I do. The, Christine? Uh, uh, line item 5271 supplies medical. Mm -hmm. and why, why it's being um, budgeted greatly over the actuals. Oh, I didn't ask that question. Do you remember what, no. what she said about that? No, we missed that. No. Yeah, because it was the same as last year, so I didn't really think much about why it was so different earlier. Okay, I don't know the answer to that either. And then I have the same question about um, overtime. And what's overtime used for? Um, usually, because people have to be on call mm -hmm. for various emergencies, mm -hmm. and when they have to do extra things like, flu shots. Um, yeah, well, wasn't the flu shots? But shots remember when the, rest, the yes, there was all the the TB and the whatever else scares, and then people had to be inoculated. That was all over. I imagine that's sort of the same explanation for the supplies medical. You know, if they've got to give well, twice as many flu shots or something, uh, that'd be a guess. But if you could check yeah, on that. Yeah, I'll ask that too. Are there other questions? Okay, we've got three questions on this. What, uh, could you? Uh, Take those, get those answered. Are there any other questions for the budget? Okay, so. Uh, yeah, I have one. Okay, Dick. <laughs> as long as we're get, ganging up on this budget. <laughs> I was, I was looking at the uh, inspector of similar rates. He, he must get salary from someplace else. He's not doing that for the seven. Point one position. Uh, that's shared with uh, Belmont. Right. Belmont? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> it's not a. It's, like it's a part time job. Yeah. What did you say? Belmont gives him, at least I, this is from last year, 2000 plus COLA. So it's a real part time position. Yeah, I yes, guess it, is. it is. Okay, are there any question, other questions? Okay, so why don't we just put a hold on this and uh, come back next time? <laughs> All right, so you, you want me to ask about overtime, medical supplies, and the funds for uh, Brennan? Uh, yeah, where the, where the balance comes from. Oh, do, Alan? Do we have any additional questions about the uh, human rights issue that Steve Harrington brought? You mean answers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, in other words, response. Yeah, Christine was the one who. Right, and Christine is does. The meet with that person monthly right. um, and you know is fully aware of what's going on and the point that she made too is the Human Rights Commission is designed for the actual victim mm -hmm. so Steve is bringing up an issue but he is not the actual victim so um, there that in itself is an issue I just wonder uh, if you have any additional process. questions that you could is Always Christine working. technically the Yes, Christine acts as the executive director. Um, they did go back, and I think that's Christine mentioned too, that there's usually only one or so complaints per year. 
So there, um, Christine Bongiorno acts as the executive director and meets with the commission once a month. She goes to the meetings, not everyone, but she goes to the meetings, but she meets with the administrator um, regularly. Okay. I think, you know, one, one of the points that Har Steve Harrington made was that he made a statement that she's not qualified to be the executive director as according to the, the article that was uh, passed. But as best we can tell, talking to Christine, uh, those duties have been subsumed by the committee itself. So, you know, the executive director doesn't need qualification per se. She's just serving as the director. Do the select, have, have the selectmen, you can ask this if you don't know, have the selectmen taken a vote to appoint her as human, uh, as the human rights commissioner, executive director? I would guess not, but. Why don't, why don't you ask if that, that's happened? Because if it, if it hasn't, they should just go ahead and do it, and then it's not really our decision to decide whether she's qualified or not, it's the Board of Selectmen's decision. Okay. But I'd like to save arguing about this for 20 minutes in front of town meeting yes. if the selectmen right. just could take well, the vote. She's also going to be here. She or uh, Patty Brennan will be here for the Harry Barber thing next week okay. in Aspen. Well, tell her we'll ask that, if she, could, if she could check on that. I will. All right, so we're skipping that one and moving on to veterans. Sure. Okay. Which is the next page. All right. So, okay, so obviously the big difference is that in the veterans aid and assistance. Yeah. Um, and in fact, um, for 2015, um, that, that amount is going to have to increase and they, were, they are going to come and request that. But be, um, I just wanna say that the state also made changes so that um, we, the town pays the housing assistance, but they get reimbursed 100%. But the other uh, veterans aid that's provided is only reimbursed at 75%. <coughs> but, so when you look at this number, it's not a total outlay. We get money back from the state. It's just not 100% of what we get back. But there have been significant increases in the amount of services and aid and assistance, whatever, that have to be provided to the families of the veterans, the families, the spouses of the veterans, because there are more of them. Okay, so are you recommending as printed? I am, which is the 420,151. Does she have, uh, sorry, uh, is there any idea right now how much Money they're going to need? 140,000. They'll need from the reserve fund? Yeah. So remember, 75% of that will come back. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Dean? Mm -hmm. um, I'm oh, sure it's not too much because you said there's a 100% piece. And there's a 75 percent piece just for the housing assistance is 100 percent everything else is 75 and that's new this year so what account is the housing assistance in? what percentage what percentage of this assistance is housing i don't know you would want me to ask her that too well really what i what i'd like to know is i'm assuming most most of the reimbursement goes into this account 5710 so Yes. So the question, I guess, I, I'd like to understand what, what's the actual cost, right? Because it's one of these budgets that... What is the actual cost of, of what? Like, what's the... What is the what's not reimbursed? What's net of reimbursement? Oh. Like, because if you tell us, okay, you need 140000 but it shows up under the housing, so it's really zero. Really want to talk about zero? Not really. I'd just like to understand what... No, it gets 100% reimbursed. Housing. Is that what you're... But well, that's my point. Okay. Right, so if, it fall, if the 140,000 falls into the 100% bucket, you kind of say, well, it's 
big numbers that aren't really big right. numbers. Yeah, so of the 360,000. How much is housing? How much is housing and how much is all of it? Right. So what's the net cost of the town? Okay. I think that money is on the cherry sheet. This is before. Yeah. Yeah, that money comes back on the cherry sheet and goes into the general fund. We had it last year about 225,800 for this fiscal year. So yeah. My guess is most of it is all else as opposed to housing, but that's just a guess. Well, I'll ask You her. can find out. Yep. Are there any other questions on this budget? Uh, Ken? The um, increase that we're seeing in veterans assistance, is this due because of uh, we recently returned young veterans, or is it a combination of the young veterans and our older veterans? <coughs> um, it's a combination of everything, yes. But significantly well, probably increase. is the younger Sorry? veterans. Signi a significant part of it, I mean, maybe most of it is the younger veterans. Younger veterans returning yeah, now. Right, right. Well, and it's mostly their families because the veterans are, have not returned. So there's the assistance for the veterans and there's assistance for the family of the, of the vets who are in, on active duty. Okay. Alan? I'm thinking again in, in the spirit of uh, transparency that under the appropriation bottom line, we might want to pull in an estimate of what, what would come in from the cherry sheet next year or something just to show that, I mean, that 75, 80 percent is a big number. Yeah, it's a yeah. Chunk right. Of that. right. So, right. Okay, so I mean, I think that's a good idea. The appropriation I mean, we put it in the master sheet, but nobody's going to tie the two together. Right. And so, it's, right. Well, it's only this year that, um, that we started, right. that the state started with separating out housing and reimbursing at 100. Oh, so before it was just 75 across yes. the board? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, I think we'll have to guess, but if we guess 75, that's a conservative level. All right. It's one of the budgets that's probably sank or sanked in the state legislature, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, Mary Margaret? Yes. What's the other than separation housing, what's the other one? Everything else is 75%. All other aid is reimbursed at 75%. Aid. And housing is 25 percent? 100. 100 percent. Housing is 100? Yeah. Yes. And everything else is 75? Is reimbursed right. at 75 percent, yes. That's a good idea to footnote that and bring that amount there. I think it's, uh, that would be informative. Well, yeah, it would also be nice if perhaps in the future it could be two separate line items here in the budget, one for housing and one for the other. So see it right here. And, and then, but they might not know yeah. until after us. Right. And of course we just right. we just put it down as uh, expenses I think in this budget. Right. What does that I mean, mean? Is this legislative would require if, if a lot of aid was needed is there a requirement to dip into the reserve fund to increase it? You know, is legally? there a requirement? I don't know the answer to that. I, so my opinion. guess is yes. That I mean, you have to, he has, the veterans officer has to provide that. Yeah. yeah. That is a requirement, how we do it. I, and my guess is probably a judge would say a lack of appropriation is not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you might even want to right. add the reserve fund request in uh, some kind of footnote, too, because that's, again, it's a big chunk of money. Yeah. yeah. But well, I, I agree with what you're saying, though, because you may, you, we all sort of take notes here. What we're talking about is it. Realistically, right, what we're talking about is an eighteen thousand dollar budget increase, not a seventy two thousand dollar budget increase. What we are asking for is a thirty five thousand dollar reserve fund transfer, not a hundred forty thousand. I think right. you're right with the offset. Yeah. It looks these numbers are bigger than yeah. they really are. Right. Yeah, yeah you're right. How long is reimbursement? Uh, and we have to appropriate how long does it take for the reimbursement? Yeah. Last year, time. don't you remember they came in for a substantial transfer from the reserve fund? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the end of the year. Yeah. 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 The, the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you wonder so if we, we should increase the budget. May it may be a question for the folks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but it's thank you mentor what a good thousand last year for the veterans veterans yeah okay so are you recommending the as printed yes i am Okay. The 420,151, and then I will ask her um, to break down the percentage of that of the aid into the 100% reimbursement and the 75% reimbursement. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded for 420,151, and then Mary Margaret will get back to us with the, uh, the split on the housing and all other. Uh, 420,151, all those in favor, or is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 218. Okay. 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 Do I do council uh, on aging? I'm before, sorry? Do I do council on aging before we go? You're singing a song. <laughs> now we got three more, two more minutes. Okay. <laughs> we don't, don't want Jerry rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, page 157 is the Council on Aging, and um, line item 5299, I'm sure, is what will get your attention. Oh. How did it go from 240 to 9,000? Because they just hired a receptionist, it's a contract job. They used to have volunteers working the desk, and it didn't work because there wasn't always the communication, and the volunteers didn't always know where to send the people within Council on Aging to get the various services they needed. So this it has <coughs> been, um, the person is hired part-time as a part-time contractor, and they want to make that person more full-time, but still a contractor, not an employee. Isn't that how private industry gets out of paying for, <laughs> oh well, yeah. Yeah. too small yeah. anyway. Yeah. There, yeah. There's some rules yes. about that. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah, well. well it's so it's story for another day. day. Yeah. 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 So otherwise, um, the budget is the same. And um, I didn't see anything unusual about salaries to comment on, but y'all should look in case you do. It's mostly just longevity or step raises that made the increase. And I think there's still a couple of people who uh, get paid from grants. Out of grants, which is, um, I believe, this, the social worker and the nurse, but I don't know what the split is. Am I going to have to ask that? Uh, yeah, they've, uh, now there are two, well, there's a full-time social, no, it's like two part-time social workers. that are paid by grants and a nurse who's paid by partially by grants also. Okay, so the big increase is the uh, contract worker. Right, the receptionist. Okay, any other questions? I have a question. Here? Is, do, you, do you know why they, those uh, grants are not shown as offsets in, in this budget? Well, you, we used to have, a, um, as part of the budget, there used to be a little chart down at the bottom that said it came from this grant and that yeah. grant. And but no I, more? I can't answer that question, why? We show them, uh, we show them footnoted in the fi Finance Committee report right. that these are uh, are part time and uh, partially paid by state grants. Right. And then we used to have it actually print out on the budget, but I, I don't know why it wasn't done that way. Okay, are there other questions? I will ask her that too. Yeah, if you could ask what, uh, what are the other 
How much more money do they get from the state grants? Are there any other questions? Council on Aging. So are you recommending the budget is printed? I am. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Is there any other discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor of 213-341, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, uh, now on Monday, you know, we have three articles, but we need to get some more budgets in. Uh, well, we'll so, have more. I'm sorry? We'll good. have more. Good, I know you will. He's ready to keep going. Yes, I yeah, am. <laughs> we're ready to cook. Okay, is there any other business before the committee? In compliance with the Mary Ronan rule? Media journal. Mm -hmm.